Today we're going to be investigating the state of Destiny 2 free-to-play and reviewing what it's really like to be a new player in this game. In the past, the new player experience has received some criticism for being confusing and overwhelming, but it did get some notable updates in the last year, so I'm really curious to see how much it has actually improved. I started a new free-to-play account so I could investigate these changes firsthand, and ultimately so I could decide if Destiny is actually good nowadays for beginners. The first thing that instantly stuck out to me while playing this new account was, of course, the in-game settings. Some of these default settings are, in my opinion, not the best, and some other ones just objectively make you worse at the game, so I had to be sure to change these. I recently made a video on this topic, feel free to check it out next. As I proceeded onward with the quest, I actually thought it did an amazing job of teaching me the basics. A new player should have no issues learning how to move around, shoot, and use their basic abilities. I thought everything with the first step of this quest was straightforward and easy to understand. The ghost even said this to teach me about the radar. If your tracker blinks, there's trouble nearby. After meeting with Shah Han, I decided to come up with a checklist of things to do in order to ensure I got the full New Light experience. Of course, I wanted to finish the Guardian Rises tutorial, and I also wanted to reach Guardian Rank 6, which is currently the highest possible rank for free players. A few other things felt important, like getting at least one exotic, investigating the pricing model of this game, and unlocking all three light subclasses. I also wanted to play the free intro of the campaigns to get a taste for those, and finally, I decided to do a reflection at the end to collect my thoughts on this whole experience. After doing a couple more steps in the tutorial, I moved on to this next quest to unlock my subclass. I couldn't help but notice the lack of overall quality and attention to detail here. You have to go around constantly kneeling like 50 times while looking at these really ugly and unfinished assets that just make no sense. There's these swinging lantern things with ropes that just move right through the ceiling, and then there's all these ugly spinning pillars that just go through the floor, ceilings, and walls like they aren't even there. Also the fact that this whole entire mission just involves kneeling over and over while actively getting blasted by enemies just doesn't feel very good. Like, I understand that this mission is supposed to be about learning your light abilities and stuff, but it just feels like a far worse version of the original quest we had back in D2 Vanilla. Afterward, while exploring the Cosmodrome, I stumbled upon some level question mark question mark enemies who just one-shotted me and caused me to glitch into the floor. Again, putting myself in the shoes of a new player here, these last two experiences would not have left me with a great first impression of the game. I also want to make this abundantly clear from the start, I'm not trying to be harsh or disrespectful with the criticism in this video, but rather, I'm just trying to imagine how a new player might feel so I can react from their perspective. I love Destiny 2, and I truly do believe it is an amazing game made by amazing developers, but of course, it definitely has some imperfections and issues, and I will be mentioning some of those in this video. I'll try to be as objective as possible and always see things from a new player's perspective, so please just keep that in mind. I was very intrigued when I noticed that the next step of the New Light quest has been recently changed within the past year. It used to ask you to go clear this lost sector and collect scraps, but now it only asks you to collect scraps. I'm not 100% sure why this change was put into effect, but now the quest doesn't introduce new players to the concept of lost sectors anymore, which is kind of unfortunate. I guess maybe the lost sector was just too hard and new players would get stuck sometimes. Upon returning to Shah Han, I was presented with my first ever legendary weapon and a little screen with some information about rarity. I was hoping that this might explain the difference between like blues, greens, legendaries, and exotics. You know, I feel like this is pretty important stuff for new players to learn. Interestingly, it didn't explain rarity at all, but instead it just kind of implied that legendaries are significantly more powerful than everything else while conveniently not mentioning exotics. Not a big deal because at this point new players don't have exotics yet anyway, but this still felt a little bit misleading. I proceeded to launch up the next quest called Cold Boot, and was extremely pleased to find that an absolutely awful bug that used to exist in this mission has now been patched. This bug would literally stop you from making progress on the mission and you just get permanently stuck. You might be thinking, oh, but this was a rare bug. But no, it was triggered by simply walking through the mission at a regular speed like any semi-competent player would. Out of curiosity, I searched it up and there are YouTube videos with hundreds of thousands of views about how to fix this glitch, so it's clear that this has ruined the quest for quite a few people and sadly probably caused a lot of them to just quit the game right here. This bug existed for years and honestly I'm surprised that fixing it wasn't priority number one for Bungie because it probably hurt the game quite a bit over time, but I digress, I was just happy to see that it was finally patched. Meanwhile, I defeated some random enemy and got a pop-up about how I just got an artifact unlock. Of course, as a veteran, I understand what this is, but as a new player, I would just be scratching my head and wondering what on earth that means. 
I don't even have an artifact or any mods unlocked yet, so this notification would just accomplish nothing other than confusing me. I really think that notifications like this should probably be hidden until the player actually learns what an artifact is. I proceeded to unlock my first Sparrow and took a nice ride through the Cosmodrome to get to the next mission. I felt like this was a good way to introduce Sparrows and it felt amazing to finally be able to use one instead of just running everywhere on foot like I had been so far. I accidentally attracted the attention of some nearby guardians in the Cosmodrome. It probably had nothing to do with my very inconspicuous name on this account. Anyway, I finally finished the Guardian Rises tutorial, acquired my ship, and I was ready to leave Earth for the first time. As I opened up the director, I noticed that nearly every destination was grayed out. I'm actually a big fan of this because it helps new players not feel so overwhelmed by stuff that isn't relevant to them yet. I've heard some veteran players say they find this annoying when making a new character, but personally, I think this is an excellent design decision. The game did a pretty good job of introducing Zavala in dialogue, so before I even arrived at the tower, I knew that he was an important character. We actually hear a lot about him before actually meeting him, but unfortunately, the other character descriptions are far less insightful. For example, we are told that the Drifter is, quote, unique, and that's literally it. See, the thing about Drifter is, he's unique. If I'm a new player, I'm probably just wondering, like, who are all these people in the tower, and why should I even care about them? When I landed in the tower hangar for the first time, I immediately noticed a problem. My quest told me to go talk to Amanda, but I couldn't because she's dead. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. Amanda was still somehow actually alive during this quest. I proceeded to walk to the main part of the tower and I found the Traveler, which was also interesting considering that it isn't there in the current iteration of the game. I was then shown a brief cinematic introducing the witness and explaining that the Traveler has gone to orbit, followed by an endless loading screen. And I'm not exaggerating when I call it endless. Out of curiosity, I waited an entire hour on this loading screen to see if it would ever finish loading, but it never did. Putting myself in the shoes of a new player here, the sheer amount of bugs that I've encountered so far would probably feel pretty off-putting. When I returned to the tower, the Traveler was gone, and Amanda was replaced with a memorial. Amanda was just introduced as like one of the main characters a few minutes ago, and then she has just been mysteriously killed off screen with no explanation? This whole sequence must just be so incredibly disorienting to new players. Destiny's narrative is confusing to begin with, but I imagine that this whole experience is just utterly baffling for new lights. I explored a little around the tower, and I realized that I'm really glad that the vault is available for free. Like, I think there definitely could have been a situation where free-to-play players only got access to 100 slots or something like that. Next up, there was actually a really good tutorial on how to use the seasonal levels. There was a pop-up telling me how experience will rank up the season pass and how it resets at the end of the season. It even guided me to the season pass in the menu and explained how I could claim rewards from the top track for free. I was impressed because thus far, the game hadn't done such a thorough job of introducing any of the other menu items, so this felt pretty helpful. Also the fact that the top track is free is pretty nice. There's definitely some good loot in there and you can even get the seasonal exotic once you get to like level 30. I leveled up my guardian rank for the first time which was pretty sweet and some guy even came over to celebrate with me. Thanks, Taco Beam. Of course I decided to also complete the Flora's Lava Challenge and get both buffs for mega high jumps. Some guy also came to the tower to rank up to guardian rank 10 and everyone threw him a party. I love that we have this culture of celebrating rank ups in our community. I also saw that the Cade statue was asking me to interact with it. If I was a new player, I wouldn't even know who that is. All I got was some basic Ikora voice line calling him a departed spark or something, so I guess all we know is that Cade is a dead guy. Something that really stood out to me at this point was the lack of emphasis on Guardian ranks. Like Bungie has kind of explained Guardian ranks to be the ultimate checklist that will take you from being a noob to a pro, but so far the game hasn't even told me what a Guardian rank is. Like, considering that Guardian Ranks is supposed to be THE thing that guides new players and tells them what to do, I really think it needs to be front and center. If I was a new player, all I would know is that I ranked up to level 2, and I wouldn't even know what I did to earn all those fireworks. I truly do think that the Guardian Ranks concept is amazing, and the objectives are perfect for guiding new players, but the game also needs to properly introduce it so that new lights can feel like they have a clear path forward. Instead of introducing Guardian Ranks though, I got a wonderful pop-up about the Eververse and Microtransaction Store. Honestly, I don't think that most people are going to want to buy cosmetics after playing the game for a total of one hour, so this pop-up felt a little aggressive and premature in my opinion. Upon returning to orbit, I realized that the director is now much more full with more planets being unlocked. Some were still locked though, and as I mentioned before, I think this gradual unlocking of destinations is a great way to prevent new players from being overwhelmed by the entire universe. I also noted that I only had 4 quests in my quest tab. 
I believe that at some point in the past, the game used to give new players like 15 quests at this time, which just felt incredibly overwhelming, so I'm glad that they have toned it down a bit. I also realized how great it is that no destination is really paywalled. Like in every other MMO I've ever played, certain new areas are always locked behind a paywall, so I was happy to find that I could explore the whole Destiny solar system for free. I picked a quest to do next, and while I was loading into the EDZ, I noticed there was a tip on the loading screen. It was something about Strand, and as a new player, I would have no idea what that is. It just made me think that the whole tip system would be so much better if the tips were based on your Guardian rank. Give basic tips to people at level 1, and then more advanced tips to people at level 10. Like, I shouldn't be getting a tip about Strand before I even unlock it or know what it is. At my current Guardian rank of 2, it would be a lot better if I got a tip about something basic that would be relevant to a new player, like how to complete a bounty. As I embarked on this quest to unlock the Risk Runner, I heard about this Cade guy again. So to summarize, a new player would now know that Cade is some dead guy who goes on wild adventures and likes to hide stashes of stuff. Not exactly the best Cade description I've heard, but I'm just sad that new players don't get to experience Cade at all. He was such an awesome character that it's kind of depressing now that new players never get to meet him or learn anything about him. Later in the mission, we get a present from Banshee's quote, chicken loving friend, but again, as a new player, I would have no idea what that means, unfortunately. As I acquired the Risk Runner exotic though, what happened next was actually amazing for new players. There was a tooltip that popped up to explain a little bit about exotics, and then you proceed onto the next room which was perfectly designed. This room was meant to basically be a Risk Runner demo. There are tons of enemies that use arc damage so that you activate the exotic perk. I felt like this was a perfect example of the game showing you why exotics are powerful and different from other weapons. In my opinion, Destiny needs to show more and tell less, and this was a great example of them actually doing that. There wasn't some boring monologue about why Risk Runner is good, no, I got actual gameplay that showed me why it is good. The only other thing I will say is that the enemies in this room were so absurdly easy that I had to intentionally stand still and let them damage me in order to activate the perk. But with that aside, this quest was an amazing introduction for teaching new players about exotic weapons. With my first exotic now in my collection, I returned to the tower to prepare for my next adventure. Upon arriving, I got a pretty good tutorial on how to use ghost mods and how to upgrade my ghost. The game walked me through the whole process and it just reminded me that a similar system would be really helpful for introducing other things in this game. I then decided to do the intro of the Lightfall campaign because that's what the game recommended. Again, I thought that the Guardian Ranks track needed to be more emphasized here so that a new player would know what to do. As soon as I loaded into the campaign, I was greeted by this lovely notification telling me to open my character screen and equip mods. But uh, there's a big problem. I'm Guardian Rank 2 at this point, and it's telling me to equip mods. But I don't get access to mods until Rank 5. Like, seriously? This notification just makes new players feel like they've done something wrong or they're missing something important. The game is confusing enough without it giving misleading instructions and asking you to do things that are literally impossible. As I moved forward in the mission, there was a helpful notification about shooting vents, and I thought this was pretty helpful because most things in the game aren't destructible, and I could definitely see new players getting stuck here and not knowing to shoot the vents. This was also followed by a good explanation of the so-called tech packs that provide shields to enemies. New players certainly wouldn't know the function of these things, so I'm glad that they were mentioned here. I am again informed for like the tenth time about an artifact unlock, but new players still don't know what an artifact is because the game hasn't introduced it yet. The continued trend of unnecessary and confusing pop-up notifications that add no value was really starting to concern me. I fought off my first Tormentor, and given that I'm using absolutely trash gear and weapons, this was actually kind of challenging. I survived with like 2 HP remaining. Beating a Tormentor certainly would be very hard and potentially undoable for some new players who've only played the game for an hour or two at this point. Especially since there's no tutorial about how to defeat Tormentors and how to hit their crit spots, a lot of new players probably just get really lost here. And it's not like I'm deciding to challenge myself by running the campaign missions early or something. The game literally recommended that I go directly from the New Light campaign into Lightfall, which is an absolutely massive step up in difficulty. I got to try out Strand, which I thought was a nice touch for free players, and it even told me how to use the Strand abilities. As a veteran player though, it felt a little bit weird using Strand when I've only partially unlocked a single Light subclass so far. I started to notice this annoying issue where a tip appears for about 0.1 seconds and then disappears. It's really not a big deal, but this is just another thing that made the game feel kind of unpolished for me. After randomly giving me 500 glimmer for no apparent reason, Nimbus gave me an artifact, but the game literally told me nothing about it. 
The artifact is one of the most important things in the entire game, but as a new player, I would have literally no idea. Remember, at this point I don't even have access to mods, so I certainly have no idea what to think about these artifact ones. I feel like there really should be some sort of tutorial explaining this, given how important it actually is. After finishing the free introduction to the Lightfall campaign, I was kinda just dropped off on Neomuna with no instructions on what to do next. As a veteran player, of course I knew I was just supposed to randomly start up any other quest in my inventory, but as a noob I would probably be confused. I think Guardian Ranks would be a great system to guide new players here, but unfortunately the game still hasn't told me that I should be following the Guardian Rank instructions. The free introduction to the Lightfall campaign really got me thinking though. What if I decided that I liked Destiny enough that I wanted to buy something? I opened up the store page and, oh my, there are 13 individual things for sale related to Destiny 2. I'm sorry, but how is a new player supposed to have any idea of which one to get? Not to mention that the price tag for everything is pretty wild. If I'm new to a game, there is no chance that I'm just going to drop $300 on it. Honestly, this store page is confusing to me even as someone who plays this game full time. I'm also a little surprised that Forsaken isn't free at this point considering that the campaign has been removed from the game. Anyway, after I finished checking out the expansion pricing structure, I resumed my journey as a free-to-play new light. I acquired my first emote, and the game actually did an excellent job of explaining how emotes work and how to equip them. This was amazing. We definitely need guidance of this quality for other important things like the artifact. Next up, I went to the farm because the seasonal quest told me to, and I got hit with another endless loading screen. But luckily this time, it didn't actually last forever. I saw another one of those tips on the loading screen, but it showed up for all of 3 seconds which definitely wasn't enough time to read it. Putting myself in the shoes of a new player again, this would probably make me feel like I just missed out on some important information, but I guess it's not the end of the world. I went to Nessus because my guardian rank objective told me to, and I met with Failsafe. Then I completed a public event because one just happened to be there, and I made it heroic because I knew how. Veteran players often complain that noobs mess up the heroic events, but it's not really their fault. The game doesn't say a single thing about heroic events, so how are they supposed to know? I spotted a hidden chest in the wild, and the new player inside of me was super excited to get some amazing loot. But then, it gave me absolutely nothing. Like, not even glimmer. Just nothing. This just felt like another thing that would lead to disappointment and confusion for a new player. I headed back to orbit and was informed of double nightfall loot and told that I should do a nightfall. If I'm a new player, I don't know what that is. Actually, I don't even have access to the Nightfall to begin with, so I don't know why this is popping up for me. I was also informed that a timeline is now available. Now this was good. A complete summary of the Destiny timeline which a new player would really want to know about, and you can just revisit it whenever you want from the director. I kinda wish that new players could learn about Destiny history with a cohesive storytelling experience instead of this timeline interface, but this is far better than just having no explanation at all. After a while, I noticed that my primary weapon was getting pretty behind on power, so I infused it to increase its power. Unless I missed it, the game hadn't told me that infusion even exists, so unfortunately this probably leads to a lot of new players simply deleting their legendary weapons due to them being low power. As I was running around doing some boring chores on the EDZ, it just occurred to me that this whole experience would be a lot better if I got to do cooler things faster. It felt like the first few hours of gameplay so far had mostly just involved boring and repetitive activities like public events and patrols. I couldn't even count the insane number of stupid objectives that I had done like defend the ghost while he scans something. Of course I realized that early quests need to be easy to understand, but I feel like the game could sprinkle in a variety of more interesting objectives that are still easy and approachable. Since I had passively completed my quests for Ark and Void, I traveled back to Ikora to unlock my final two subclasses and check those off my list. The game actually provided an excellent tutorial on how to equip, inspect, and customize my subclasses. This is definitely one of the more complicated things that a new player needs to understand, so I was really pleased with how helpful this tutorial was. I proceeded to buy some grenades and fragments, but since fragments cost like a trillion glimmer, I was only able to afford a few. I was also pleasantly surprised to find that you can buy all of the supers for free. They used to be locked behind Forsaken before we had the 3.0 subclasses. While I was at the tower, I also ranked up to Guardian Rank 3, which was followed by about a million pop-ups with all of these triumphs I didn't know existed. Nobody came to celebrate with me this time, which made me sad, but I continued onward to inspect my objectives for the next Guardian Rank. I was actually a big fan of these next objectives due to what they teach you about the game. You have to engage with the gunsmith, buy some stuff from him, do a bounty for him, and also learn about other systems in the game like how to apply a shader and how to apply a ghost mod. 
The objectives within Guardian Ranks also provided a little description on how to do these things, which I thought was a really nice touch. Very cool. I acquired an exotic cipher from a Triumph, and it told me to go to my collections because it thought I had acquired an actual exotic weapon. At least it did finally introduce me to the collections tab, but this whole fiasco would probably be still confusing for a new player. I finished up the quest to unlock Transmog and got a great tutorial on how to actually use it. The quest also conveniently gave me enough glimmer to rank up to my next Guardian rank. I launched into some Crucible and actually got a PvP related tip on the loading screen. Amazing! Unfortunately though, that was the extent of my PvP training. No tutorial, no guidance, and no advice on how to play Crucible. Naturally, I went on a 20 kill streak and got a wee round out of medals, thank you very much, skill based matchmaking. I proceeded to play Gambit, and surprise surprise, nobody was banking their moats. I really feel like Destiny needs in-depth tutorials on how to play Gambit and Crucible. Like imagine if you could select a PvP tutorial where you could explore the maps and do target practice on some AI guardians. It would also be nice to explain the different modes, and in the case of Gambit, it would be really great if we could teach noobs how to bank moats. I visited Zur, and of course some of his stuff required an expansion, but he also had a surprising amount of free stuff. Pretty great source of exotics, considering that I only had Risk Runner unlocked so far. One of my Guardian rank objectives was to get 10 pieces of unique legendary armor, and I got stuck on this for a super long time. I kept getting weapons over and over, and I also got plenty of duplicate legendary armor that would not advance my progress. I also thought that this step might be moderately confusing for new players because it didn't really say how you should get legendary gear. In my opinion, it would be nice if it at least recommended a good way to get legendaries. I loaded into the Witch Queen campaign to try out the free introduction mission that it offers, and apparently this was the right time to introduce me to the definition of an energy weapon. At this point, I was just bewildered. I had been playing the game for like 5 hours at this point, and it just now thinks that I need to learn what an energy weapon is? Like I think it would have been helpful to know this earlier for the literal hundreds of shielded enemies that I've fought so far. After way too many hours of grinding for 10 pieces of legendary armor, I finally accomplished my objective and leveled up to Guardian rank 5. I found it interesting that one of my next objectives was to speak to Saint-14 about Trials of Osiris. Like man, I'm a free-to-play account that doesn't have access to Trials to begin with, and then also I'm using mostly blue gear and I'm like a million power levels too low to even consider Trials. When I got to Saint, he didn't even explain anything at all, so honestly I felt like this whole objective was pretty pointless. My next objective was to upgrade my armor, but then the game literally wouldn't let me do it. As it turned out, I actually had to equip mods before I could upgrade my armor, which literally makes no sense. I can imagine being a new player and just feeling so lost on this step. These Guardian rank steps really need to provide more guidance on some of the more complicated things in this game. Because honestly, in its current state, it basically just told me, oh congrats, you've unlocked the extraordinarily complex armor system and mod system. Good luck, hopefully you understand it all now. On the bright side though, the process of acquiring mods has been massively improved over the past year. Back in the day, new players would literally have no access to any mods, and they would have to just hope that the vendor was selling the mod that they wanted and buy it from them. Nowadays though, you just get them all unlocked automatically by leveling up in Guardian ranks. I can't even begin to explain how huge this improvement is. I'm just so glad that we now have this system. I finished up my Guardian rank objectives and reached rank 6, finally checking off another goal on my list. I knew that I wouldn't be able to get to rank 7 without buying Lightfall, but I was content with what I had achieved so far. The Guardian rank system definitely provided some very solid guidance and introduced my account to some of the most important things that I would need to know as a new player. However, it also felt like it was lacking in certain areas. For example, as someone who enjoys PvP, I'm pretty disappointed that PvP is not really mentioned at all on any of the Guardian ranks, even after rank 6. Guardian ranks are supposed to reflect your level of mastery of the entire game, and that really needs to include all of the core playlists, or it isn't actually true mastery. Looking back on my experience now, I feel like the New Light introduction did a great job of teaching me the basics, but unfortunately it skipped over some of the more complicated and yet important systems that a new player would need to understand. Like for example, the New Light quest did a great job of teaching me the basics of how to shoot my weapon, but then it never told me a single thing about mods, artifact mods, the loadout system, infusion, like it basically completely failed to mention so many important things that every new player needs to understand. It certainly wasn't awful, it just felt a little unpolished and unclear. I completely get why some people feel lost as new players, and that's why I made a beginner's guide video to teach all of the New Lights out there. Going through this whole experience again made me realize that Destiny would really benefit from a series of tutorials for new players. This realization made me remember a strategy game called Rebellion that I used to play all the time. It featured tutorials that you could launch from the main menu. 
Like imagine a world where you could open up the Destiny settings menu at any time and launch a tutorial that would explain the armor system in depth. It would teach you how to equip mods, how to make some basic mod synergy, how to masterwork things, and it could just educate you on everything you need to know about the armor system. There could be another tutorial that explains how to navigate all the menus because they often feel confusing and overwhelming to new players. There could be another one that's just a refresher for basic gameplay. I think a tutorial system like this would go a long way to making the game more approachable. I just feel like Destiny doesn't explain enough to its new players, and that is a huge reason why it struggles to retain them. Despite my numerous critiques of the game systems throughout this video, I've kind of come to the conclusion that the new player experience has been much improved and is now actually pretty solid. Especially with the addition of Guardian ranks and the massively improved mod acquisition process, the New Light experience has been vastly improved over the past year. It is certainly not perfect, and in my opinion it still needs a lot of tweaks, but it's definitely not as bad as some people say. Free to play can actually access a lot of amazing content like an intro to every campaign, Dares of Eternity, the Prophecy Dungeon, and even raids like King's Fall and Vault of Glass. This really is some amazing content when you consider the price tag of zero dollars. And honestly, compared to other games, the overall free to play experience in Destiny is very good. In World of Warcraft, for example, you can only go up to level 20, and that content is not very interesting and it's like 20 years old at this point. In Destiny, you get to try out so many different things, and although your experience will undoubtedly be worse than someone who is paying for the game, there is enough free stuff to get a good feel of what Destiny is all about. I also absolutely love the fact that Destiny doesn't put gameplay systems behind a paywall like other games do. For example, it would really suck if you had to buy the game before you'd be able to use stuff like the vault, loadouts, and clans. So overall, if I had to grade these two experiences, I'd give New Light a B because it still doesn't explain things as clearly as it could, and I'd give Free to Play a solid A- due to the quality and amount of content that it provides. With that being said, getting new players into Destiny, and more importantly, keeping them in Destiny, is incredibly important for the long-term health of this game. Improving the introduction and tutorials should be a top priority, and I still think that the new player experience needs some big improvements to make it more approachable and welcoming for newcomers. Obviously, this video took a really long time to make because I played for a long time on this account specifically for this project, so if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Next up, check out this ultimate beginner's guide that I made for Destiny 2. It explains everything that new players need to know, and it specifically explains the important stuff that the tutorial doesn't teach you. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.